Good evening, dear friends, and welcome to worship here at St. Paul for our Tuesday night's Unplugged worship service. We are glad that you are joining us. And before we continue onward with our worship tonight, we have a few announcements to get through. First, in the last week, we have sent out a survey to emails asking for opinions and thoughts and comments about our return to worship. If you've already filled out that survey, Thank you so much. We really appreciate your feedback. If you have yet to fill it out the survey, uh, please do that. We would love to hear your thoughts and opinions and comments about um, the timeline for our return to in-person worship here at St. Paul. If you did not receive the email or if doing things online is uh, not in your wheelhouse, feel free to call the office and Julie will help you to get your uh, comments and ideas heard and included in the survey. Second announcement for tonight is a reminder about our soft open return to worship. These Tuesday night worship services will continue online, but starting August 4th uh, in two weeks, we will be returning to in-person worship for Tuesday night. Um, that will uh, include signups and some particular restrictions to what worship will look like. We are still in the finalizing processes of getting those details hammered out. So keep an eye on your email if that's something you're looking forward to. Or if you, uh, again, if you are not on email connections, feel free to contact the office and we can make sure to keep you in the loop as soon as we have all of those details put together. Last but not least, a reminder that this week, Pastor Jared is on vacation. Even though he's here with us recording today for worship, he's not with us right now as this is airing for worship on Tuesday night. So we ask that we continue to respect Pastor Jared's Sabbath time. If you have any pastoral concerns or emergencies, please feel free to contact me. Um, I'm more than happy to uh, respond to anything that's going on, especially in this season of being socially distant. With that, that concludes our announcements and we'll continue with our opening song. Let us pray. Beloved and sovereign God, through the death and resurrection of your Son, you bring us into your kingdom of justice and mercy. By your Spirit, give us your wisdom that we may treasure the life that comes from Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of Romans. The Spirit helps us in our weakness. For we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God who searches the heart knows what is the mind of the spirit, because the spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, in order that he might be the firstborn within a large family. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up, for us all, 
so that we will not only be with him, but he will give us everything else. Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died, yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake, we are being killed all day long. We are counted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Here ends the reading. Well, dear friends, this week we are dwelling not in the gospel text for the week, but instead with our Romans text, which when we were reading through it, it seemed like a very poignant text to be talking about. And since uh, we dwelled somewhere else for the sermon on Sunday, uh, we thought it would be really important to talk about this text for our Tuesday night worship service. So one of the things that's really poignant about this uh, passage, in my opinion, is especially in this time where so much is happening in the world, so much is seeming to divide us and just not be good, um, when we might not have words for prayers, we have assurance in this passage, right? And you talked a little bit about this on Sunday during your uh, children's message. Do you want to say anything more about that in this space? Well, I think uh, one of the things that I've discovered in my many years of being pastor is that uh, people sometimes we'll ask a pastor, pastor to say the prayer because they're worried that they, don't, mm. they wouldn't be able to say the right thing. But there is no right thing to say in, in, the, in prayer. And I think this passage right here reminds us that we have some help, mm -hmm. even when we're talking to God. And so it's something that I've, I've always appreciated. 
I, I think that one of the things I've noticed in our short time together mm -hmm. is that Pastor Anders really um, has this liturgical aspect to his prayers, and he's really good at these extemporaneous prayers that almost sound like poetry. And and some people may think, well, I can't do that, I'm, so I must not be a, you know good at prayers. That's that, that doesn't matter how you pray. We all are individuals, right. and we're all different uh, as children of God, and we, we have different ways of, of communicating to yeah. one another. Certainly. And and so there's really, and I wanted to I stress that with the, in our children's message, mm -hmm. too, is that the important thing is that we do pray, and, and mm -hmm. that even if we don't know what to pray, God helps us. Yeah. And, and I appreciate that part. I agree. And I think one of the things that, people might point to pastors more often, and the reason pastors might sound more eloquent in saying these things is that we lead prayers all the time, right? It's part of our job. So I understand it being expected of us, but I'm always the one who wants to invite the voices of people who don't, so don't often get to pray in front of other people. One, for the sake of that they can become more comfortable praying openly and in words, um, but practice helps you to feel more comfortable. So I think that yeah. when those when those invitations arise, feel free to take them. You're, I would say you're not stepping on our toes when you <laughs> when someone else wants to pray before a meal that we happen to be there for or something along those lines. Yeah, and right? I like unique prayers. So yes, It doesn't exactly. have to sound like a pastoral prayer. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes a liturgical aspect creeps into our prayers because we do it so often. That doesn't mean that's the way it has to be done. Mm -hmm. I like it when someone just says, dear God, please help me not to get an F on this test. <laughs> <laughs> um, or just any kind of personal prayer is, is very special to yes. me to hear. Yeah, certainly. And I think that there are a lot of examples that we have words given to us for prayers, right? We've got the Lord's Prayer that we do each week in all of our worship services. Um, in the past, I've used Martin Luther's evening and morning prayers for, as my, like, when I wake up, I'm going to say this prayer in particular, and it helps to have that rhythm of those words that are present. But I think there's also something to be said, like you, like you mentioned, of words that are just off the cuff that are speaking to the moment as we are experiencing it. And even if it's not the most eloquent or uh, maybe not even the most church friendly prayer, mm -hmm. when we're speaking those things in the quiet of our heart, God is there with us and hears us. And the spirit intercedes for us when we don't have words, which is often how I find myself feeling it. Yeah, early season. in the morning, and yeah. late at night, it's good to fall back on prayers that n you didn't necessarily come yeah. up with, that you learned. Uh, and I think Luther kind of understood that with why, why mm -hmm. he gave us morning and evening prayer. And, and that's a perfect time to fall back on something mm -hmm. like that. Because I know that when I wake up in the morning, the first thing I do want to do is kind of center myself with God, but my thoughts are kind of jumbled at that point, and I may not um, have the greatest prayer. Now, again, there is no good or bad prayer, but I, I mean, all prayers are good, mm -hmm. but sometimes it's good to have a little bit of help. Yes, agreed. And uh, to that end of morning prayers, I'll have like my pre-caffeine morning prayers of like, dear God, help me help this coffee to brew faster. And then I'll have my like more eloquent prayers that'll happen after mm. I've had a cup of coffee. So, you know, things you lean into when you know, when you know your own self and know how you wake up and everything else. Sure. Anyway, one other thing that's in this passage that we definitely wanted to talk about was uh, in this particular letter to the Romans, the language of predestination is used that uh, uh, people are predestined to particular things. Um, and in the history of the church, not to say that this passage is specifically used always to that end, but this image of predestination, that uh, there is a lack of control over uh, our eternal fate or over a lot of things that might be predetermined by God. What, do you, what are things that you've heard about predestination or what what is your experience with that then? Well, as we are talking about this, when we're going over this passage, I realize that the only time I really have ever talked about mm -hmm. predestination or double predestination, which we'll talk about in a little bit, is in seminary, right? right. You, you don't yes. hear Lutherans talk about it because it really doesn't <laughs> gel with our theology, mm -hmm. but it is a historical aspect of our church where, our, you know, long time ago, people thought that Everything is in God's control, as we know everything is in God's control, but the freedom of choice to decide to follow God or not follow God, there was this time period where people thought it doesn't matter. You're predestined to either go to heaven or predestined for eternal damnation, and that's double predestination, which is a John Calvin thing. 
And and I think it did a lot of harm mm -hmm. through through the years. There may be some remnants of predestination that people have, people that just think that, you know, no matter what, you can turn away from God right now, but you'll eventually come back because that's God's plan for you. Mm -hmm. I understand that line of yeah, reasoning, yeah. but at the same time, we have to understand that our life is, there's some give and take here, and God wants us to have freedom, and God hopes that we make the right choices, mm -hmm. but it doesn't always happen that way. And I just refuse to believe that from the beginning of creation that we are all predestined whether we were we are going to be saved or not saved. And, and we've talked many times in our <laughs> Tuesday night discussions about how we feel about hell. We think that it's going to be empty when, when it's all said and done, so how does predestination even work with something like that. Right, certainly. And when we, we as Lutherans have such a strong emphasis on grace, mm -hmm. right, that um, the idea that uh, your decisions in the end will end up in something that's pre-planned doesn't mesh. And it's, it's, it's really hard, right? And I think that that goes back to even some of those conversations we've had about what is fueling your desire to be engaged in a relationship with your creator, right? With predestination, there's a much stronger sense of fear as like the base for that relationship. Like, I sure hope that I'm one of the people that's predestined to go to heaven. So out of fear, I'm gonna do my best to maintain like these rigid lines. Whereas in a relationship that's grounded in grace, we are excited and happy that we are beloved children of God and we show thanks for that by caring for our neighbor and responding to God's call to care for our neighbor, right? All of those things flow out of this non, <laughs> it's still a, an up and down relationship between creator and created, but it's not so much of like a, uh, I'm doing this out of fear over the power you're holding over me of either one or the other of eternal salvation or eternal damnation. Which, yeah. I'd like to think because it was the church that it wasn't to strike fear into people. Oh, yeah. There's some aspects of it where it took the pressure off of people. Like, okay, right. whew, I don't have to worry about mm -hmm. making sure I follow the Torah exactly the way I'm supposed to or, right, right, or to right. follow God's law. I just Because if I'm predestined to be saved, then God's going to take care of it in the mm -hmm. end. But then there's the flip side, the, yes. double, the double predestination where no matter what I do, no matter how hard I try, I mean, I could be condemned to eternal damnation. That's awful. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, I, and I think that it's good that through the, the centuries we've kind of pulled away from that understanding. Yeah. But it's in this text. Right. And you brought up a really good point that it's maybe it's not really talking about um, what God preordained as far as salvation is concerned, mm. but in who we're called to mm. be and our calling, that maybe our calling, the gifts that God has given us, all that has been predetermined and how we live that out, mm -hmm. there is still freedom there on how, how we decide to choose to do that. Right. And I think a lot of that is when we talk about vocation discernment and listening to God's call for uh, to better understand our own gifts and skills that were granted to us, um, in our creation, the things that um, we have experienced and learned throughout our lives all help lead us into a better understanding of what we are called to do during our time on this earth, right? Um, for some people, that's ministry. For others, that's uh, working in medicine. For others, that's uh, caregiving for people. And the, the possibilities are endless. And we often, our vocations uh, take different paths and follow different things. And we experience different mm. things throughout our lives that help to form us into the people that we are. And I think that when we think about that and think about how God has been present with us throughout that whole journey, throughout all of these different parts of our lives that have helped to form us into the people we are, we can see some of the, those pieces of uh, predestined by God for, to follow parts of this path, but not without some of our own ability to make decisions along those lines, right? Yeah, I, I think like, that's I really like helpful. That way of yeah, saying. certainly. But I think the, the last piece of this passage that's really powerful and helpful especially in the face of uh, if the, the voices of us being separated from God are ever uh, speaking louder than we would like them to, um, we have that last portion of this passage that tells us there are so many things that will not separate us from God, ending with, or anything in all of creation, right? right. There is nothing that will separate us from God. What do you think that text how do you find comfort in that text? 
It, it is really comforting. Usually, I lean toward it in times of death mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. impending death. Um, it is a very popular funeral passage, mm -hmm. and the more I preside over funerals, the more that those words become more important to me, even than the 23rd Psalm. Yeah, oh right. Because yeah. that all leads you up until the valley, and this seems to be like, well, there is nothing in the world that will be able to separate me from Jesus, so there's really nothing that, that I should be afraid of. So it, it, it takes fear away from me when I, when I really take to heart these words. But it, it reminds us of how close God is to us. And I mean, there are, are powerful things that we're worried about. This pandemic, this, this virus that we're, we're all experiencing in, in the world around us and the hatred and bigotry that we sometimes are, are surprised to still here in this world, as powerful as that is in the negative, to be reminded that it's not it's not too powerful for God and mm -hmm. that it's not beyond God's scope to take care of us. Yeah. And even when, especially in this time when we feel so separated from one another, mm. um, in this time where a lot of those connections that we've taken so much time to build with one another, they feel so distant, we can rely on these words to provide some sense of comfort to recognize that this connection with our creator is one that will never go away. Um, and you're right. I think that it's, it's really comforting um, especially in the times of death and recognizing those um, not to diminish our human connections with people as we're living but to recognize that it's not a complete abandonment of this person that we love so much it's uh, a new chapter right so we're more connected to the person who has died I mean who has passed away so uh, that is another aspect of, another reason why it is carefully chosen for mm -hmm. memorial services is because it reminds us that we're we're not separated right and, and that's and that's what leads to our fear right yeah Just being alone and being separated from those we love certainly most uh, anything else about the passage that you like it has a lot of things I know you preached on the gospel but uh, this this letter to the Romans has so many things in it yes uh, a few times he repeats the part about not being separated mm -hmm. uh, and <laughs> I was joking around with Pastor Andrews beforehand saying why don't I talk about the prayer stuff and never being separated from Christ and you talk about the slaughtering of the the lambs <laughs> or we are led All like sheep fun to things <laughs> right super great <laughs> but even that he's trying to say that you know this is our mentality in the world yeah, yeah, yeah. and I'm here to tell you that nothing will be able to separate you from Christ right really really powerful passage well I think that's that's it for the the discussion we really uh, appreciate the comments that people are giving about our service we know it's a little different than our normal Sunday <laughs> worship service but I know I can speak for myself that I have a lot of fun yeah. having these conversations these theological <laughs> conversations with Pastor Anders so let us pray dear God we thank you that uh, your word is so complex but so filled with deep, deep meaning. We know that every time we look at, at the Bible, there's different ways that we can think about it and different, almost different interpretations at times. Thank you for this opportunity for us to gather together and to look at your word and discuss it in a unique way. We know that you are here in the midst of this conversation. We ask that you be with us as we go on forward to our week. Um, help us to be safe, to enjoy the world around us, and to care for, for our neighbors. For you are the great creator, and we are the created ones. We are to live in, or, in glory and honor to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray for the whole church and for all people according to their needs. O Holy Spirit, we ask that you come into our hearts and surround our lives. We know there are times when our weakness uh, causes us to pull away from you and from God's people. Help us to remember that you are with us, that in times when we can't even pray the way we ought to, that you will intercede. We ask that you be with this world right now as we are completely broken. So many of us are filled with worry, fear, all kinds of anxiety. Help us as we are in the midst of this pandemic to put our trust into you and to do things that you would have us do so that we will show that we love our neighbors. We are concerned about anyone getting sick. We pray that you would be with our nation as we are divided over race and racial issues. Help us to understand that we are all siblings in Christ. We are all equal in your eyes and to show that as we relate to one another. We ask that you would be with our church. Help us to always remember that it is important to bring the gospel into the community, that we represent you to all people. As we worship today, uh, we know that we are praising you, we are hearing your word, but help us to live that out in our lives. When we leave this place, help us to be ambassadors of Christ and remind us that we are together, we are a family in Christ, and that you go before us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us join together in the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. God's blessing. As you depart from this place, may the wisdom of the Holy Spirit be your constant companion. May Christ's words inspire your every work. 
and may our Creator's love hold you this day and always. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.